Welcome. Today I'm going to share with you my process for starting a master copy. The painting is titled The Magic Circle and it was created by J.W. Waterhouse. It's one of my favorite paintings by one of my favorite artists. But first I wanted to share a few of my own paintings from the last year or so. I thought it would give some good context for the variety of art that I create. The first three paintings are from a series that I did of stills from movies. And I did these in all different kinds of mediums, but they were all mini paintings. And I, since I really like working in a mini size, this was a really fun challenge for me. I did the first in acrylic. I did the last two in watercolor, along with um, some line work that I did with ink. This painting is an experiment that I did with oil. If you want to see a better version of it, it's up on my website, which is linked below. I've been playing around a lot with color and my style with oil, and this was a really fun project. This is an acrylic. I really like the glow and the color of it, and I found it on Pinterest. This is a painting of Galadriel from The Lord of the Rings, and I have a full video of this. If you want to see that, I can link that but I really enjoyed the highly detailed process of this. This one is a self-portrait that I did in oil and I'm kind of just playing around with themes lately and trying out different things with the medium. This was a watercolor painted from what appears to be a vintage photo that I found on Pinterest and I just really liked the colors and it was really just me exploring what I can do with watercolor. This is a master copy of, from a painting by Charles Courtney Curran. I did this last year along with another bunch of series of artworks that I did. It was really freeing to work in an impressionist style and I've been trying that a lot more lately. I'm sort of developing a balance between different styles. This is another good example of that. I did this from a reference photo again from Pinterest. I created a video of this nautical painting as well, and it was a really fun experiment. I tried a lot of different elements in it and sort of combined my own references. I'm trying to teach myself a little bit more about composition and how to work with color, and it's really a challenging process, and I'm enjoying the process, and I wanted to share a little bit about that here, and that's also why I'm trying to do master copies because they really teach you a lot about all of those things and teach you how to make your own original art, especially in the way that you want to create art. This one's a little bit older, but it's an acrylic painting that I did that I really think is cute. It's hanging up in my living room right now. And I just like the quality of it, the colors, the looseness of it. Here is my first master copy that I did of a water house. It is the Lady of Shalott. It is a 10 by 10, I believe. It was a really good exercise in teaching me patience and how to plan out my work. Lastly, a little mini watercolor and colored pencil drawing that I just think is really sweet and very representative of my style. So now that you've seen some of my older work, let's get into the newest painting that I'm working on. And this is going to be on hardboard. I really like this kind of panel. I started by mixing up a base to start on with acrylic paint, heavily watered down. I just kind of like setting a base and being able to sketch over it. It's very messy to start with. I think it's better almost if I start really messy. It allows me to be less precious about the line work that I'm doing. And I like just kind of sketching everything in and sort of getting a very loose idea of where everything goes. I mark everything in. I uh, set the center of the canvas so that I understand where to frame everything out and have kind of a starting point. It's really good to mark those midlines. I think that that's really helpful. And I just kind of keep going along like that and adjusting. And it's really fun to just use colored pencil. These are Faber-Castell. I worked with three different colors throughout the process, as you'll see. And I 
really kind of just blocked everything in. I like to make sure I'm getting the right angles. And there's really no way you can go wrong with this. I think that it's really useful to just kind of let yourself make those mistakes. Now's the time you want to really make the mistakes about proportion and where everything lands. It's a really good lesson for creating your own original artwork, I think, because this is a good thing to do in your sketchbook. It kind of, you can just sort of plan everything out and be as messy as you want and make all the mistakes ahead of time. And even as Waterhouse did, create paintings, smaller versions of the final painting as studies themselves. So I definitely want to start getting into things like that. And this is a good start, I think. I'm really happy with the way this turned out just as the sketch. And I'm about to start painting the actual painting soon. Once I had marked a lot of the bigger shapes down in red colored pencil, I came in with the black to sort of cement everything in basically where I knew it was going to go and then just kind of start adding more line work and really getting a stronger sense of where everything is going to go so that when I start laying paint down, I really like to have an idea because I tend to work in multiple stages. I want to be able to confidently put the paint down on the board and I even used white pencil just mostly just for fun for the enjoyment of it it created the highlights that i wanted as you see i used it for drawing in the smoke from the fire i added a lot of the highlights on the figure as well and the reason for that is to just pull out the detail that i might have lost with all the excess line work that i was doing the nice thing about these Faber-Castells is that they are very easy to erase. They do smear quite a bit, so I'm touching up before I paint a little bit and maybe dabbing a little away the excess that I've drawn on there. But for now, this is a really good system and it allows me to draw very freely on what is a fairly lightly textured surface. I don't think I talked about how I prepare these. I have in previous videos, I think but um, I have to prep these hardboard. I actually talked about this in my favorite supplies video. So if you wanna see how I did that, you can check that out. I talk about it a little bit, I think, in there. So I'm just going over and redefining a lot of the lines. And because I can see where I last made them with the red pencil, I can go back over with the black and the white and sort of overcorrect that stuff. And it really helps me gain a better perspective on where I've been and then see where I went wrong. And a lot of times I also am using the pencil itself as a sort of ruler, as a gauge to make sure that everything kind of lines up in relation to another thing. You'll see me throughout this video sort of continuously do that. But it really is very useful and I use it continuously. A lot of artists do that, but I didn't wasn't trained formally, so I'm always sort of using my instinct and teaching myself these things. And it really is helping me out in making sure that I am getting the correct positioning of everything. And also I think going back and filling things in and adding shading, even though it might be unnecessary for this particular stage of the painting. Yeah, I'm really happy with the final result. So that was the first part. I'm gonna show the whole process throughout, including the painting and some of the sketchbook work that I did. And so if you like this, like the video and subscribe so that you can see more of the work that I'm doing and the completion of this painting. I hope you enjoyed and have a great day.